And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you to put your hands together and give a big Todd Talks welcome to Mike Asshole. Jim, Jim, did that say asshole? I say, can you hear me backstage? It's a solely, not arsehole, you cretin. Hello, everybody. Hello, America. Thank you, thank you. It's jolly great to be in San Francisco. Well, what a fantastic welcome. Thank you so much. As you all know, I'm very famous. I have over 50 million followers on Feces Book and Twitter. I've written scores of motivational and self-help e-books that, of course, I constantly quote from. When I have visitors to the office, I make them run up the stairs so that they think I'm dynamic. And as you already know, I'm all over social media like a rash. Oh, yes. If there's a vein of gold in there, then Mike Asoli wants it. And that's why I'm such a wonderful and successful person. I selfishly go for what I want, and I know how to profit from other people's insecurities and self-doubts. But that's enough of the honesty. There's no place for stuff like that in the cut-and-thrust world of modern social media marketing. We are here to talk about serious things, and today we're going to be talking about understanding the word profit in different cultures. We're going to use the ownership of a cow as our example. In fact, let's make that two cows. Now, in traditional British capitalism, you have two cows. Then you sell one. Next, you buy a bull and let it get about its business. Your herd multiplies and the economy grows. Then you sell the jolly old herd and retire. But the world is not quite as globalised and homogenised as you might think. Our two cows can look very different in other cultures. In an American corporation, for example, you have two cows, you sell one of the cows, and then outsource the other one, and force it to produce the milk of four cows. Later, you hire a management consultant to analyse why the cow dropped dead. In the European Union, you have two cows. They are so highly regulated that you spend more time filling in forms than you do looking after the cows. You end up having to shoot one. You can still milk the other cow, but it all ends up in a milk lake, and eventually it all gets thrown away. In a socialist state, you have two cows. You have to give one to your neighbour. Then the state takes the other one from you and sells you back some milk. However, under a fascist regime, you have two cows and the state takes both of them, then shoots you for criticising their actions. In France, you have two cows, you go on strike, organise a riot, set up burning roadblocks and throw any foreigners' cows onto the fires. All because you wanted three cows, not two. In Japan, you have two cows. You redesign them to be smaller than normal cows. But to produce 20 times the milk, you then create a clever cartoon character called Cowzilla and market it worldwide, creaming it, if you'll pardon the pun, on the merchandising and film rights. In India, you have two cows. You worship them. In Italy, you have two cows, but nobody knows where they are. However, the Mafia are still taking protection money from you for them, so you go for a three-hour lunch, only to find the Mafia have laundered one of the cows onto your plate. In Germany, you have two cows, you re-engineer them, so that they live for a hundred years, only eat once a month, and milk themselves. In China, You may only have two cows, but you have 300 people milking them. You claim full employment and high bovine production. Then you arrest the journalist who reported the real situation and send him off for re-education. In the United Kingdom, you have two cows, but they are probably both barking mad. But if you're an investment bank in London, 
you may have two cows and then sell three cows to your publicly listed company. Then you execute a debt for equity swap and get four cows back with a tax exemption for five cows. Then the milking rights for six cows are transferred to a Cayman Islands company which then sells the rights for seven cows back to your UK listed company. The annual report states that the company has eight cows and then you make a share offer available in the hope that the public will um, buy your bullshit, I suppose. Of course, if it were a Swiss bank, you would have 5,000 cows. None of them would belong to you, but you would charge the owners for storing them. In Nigeria, you have two cows and they are both cash cows. At least, that's what you tell everyone in the scamming and phishing emails that you send out. In Russia, you have two cows. You count them and find out you have five cows. You count them again and find you have 48 cows. You count them again and you find you're back to two cows. You stop counting cows and open the third bottle of vodka today. Dos vidanya, Tavaric. Before coming on the show, I learned that two Brazilian cows died in an accident. Now, I don't profess to know how many a Brazilian is, but it sounds like a heck, a heck of a lot. In Australia, you have two cows. Business seems pretty good. So you close the office to go down to the beach to celebrate and to have a couple of beers. Then you accidentally barbecue one of the cows and have to go back to work. In remote parts of Canada, you have two cows. And that one on the right is starting to look very attractive. And finally, in Iraq, you tell everyone you don't have any cows. But nobody believes you. They bomb your country and then invade. You still don't have any cows after the invasion. But at least now, you are part of democracy. Hurrah! I've been Mike Soli, ladies and gentlemen, and you have been a great audience. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to buy my latest book. Thank you. I do so love America. Even the brain dead and people with no obvious talent are so enthusiastic here. Let's hear it for Mike Soli, please, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together. Well, I still think that guy's name... Looks like it should be pronounced asshole, Jim. Hey, what's that red light? We're not still on air, are we?